there exist several humans who are graced with spider-like abilities. A part of the expansive Marvel Universe and its multiverses is Silk. In this marvellous video, we're going to talk about Silk's origin story. It looks like Peter Parker wasn't alone in being bitten by the radioactive spider that fateful day. So who is this mysterious spider person? Why is her superhero alias Silk? Where does she come from? What was she hiding from? How are Silk and Peter connected? Well, let's find out. Before we go into our video, we have a small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Now let's begin. Tragic Backstory of Silk Silk, also known as Cindy Moon, first appeared in the relaunched issue of The Amazing Spider-Man No. 1, published in 2014. The comic begins with the prelude to an incident that happened 13 years previous. We are shown a science exhibit that aspires to demonstrate radioactive rays use in the laboratory. An unfortunate specimen of a spider absorbs abnormal amounts of radioactivity and in its dying shock bites the nearest living thing. That just so happens to be Peter Parker. Contrary to popular belief though, that spider didn't die after it bit Peter. Instead, it scuttled across the floor and bit a woman. Her identity is kept hidden for the moment. In issue 4 of the comic, Spider-Man and Hulk and Wolverine are battling the villain Orb. Orb uses one of the Watcher's eyes to unleash a bomb full of secrets. The Watchers are one of the cosmic entities that vowed never to interfere in affairs, just to watch. The Orb claims that letting this bomb go off will put many secrets out into the world. The Watcher, whose eye it once was, had seen everything. It is revealed to Spider-Man that he wasn't the only one bitten at the science exhibit. He gets a vision of a girl apologizing to her parents for accidentally webbing them. This is Cindy Moon. After being bitten, she could barely control her newly gained powers. Spider-Man decides to help Cindy. Let's dive into Cindy Moon's backstory and history. As a teenager, her parents realized that Cindy had an eidetic memory this is the ability to recall any scene images with the highest precision. While her mother wished for Cindy to focus more on her academics, Cindy enjoyed playing on the school hockey team with her boyfriend Hector. On a seemingly normal day, Cindy finally told her mother she was going on a date with Hector instead of the school field trip. Her mother disapproved and forced her to attend the field trip to General Tektronics. This is where the irritated spider that bit Peter on his hand fell to the floor and bit Cindy on her ankle. Cindy realized her power when she accidentally shot organic webbing that trapped her parents. This is where Ezekiel Sims came into play. Ezekiel went through a ritual that granted him the powers of the spider totem. He then gained powers akin to Spider-Man. His nemesis, a being named Morlun, swore to kill all the spider totemic avatars that exist across the multiverse. Ezekiel dedicated his time to protect all the spider avatar from Morlun's bloodlust. Upon her parents' agreement, Ezekiel took Cindy away to teach her how to use her powers appropriately. When he realized that Morlun was actually hunting Cindy down, Sims decided to lock her away in a bunker. This bunker was safeguarded against Morlun's detection and was stocked with years worth of food and tapes of the outside world. Once Spider-Man found out about her existence, he decided to seek her out. When Peter entered Ezekiel's building, an automated tape began to play. It was Ezekiel who confirmed Cindy's existence and what she was. Cindy begged Peter not to open the bunker. Before Peter could even explain the fact that he had killed Morlun, Cindy flew at his throat in a rage. Peter noticed how fast Cindy was as she easily evaded all of his webs. After years of boredom in the lonely bunker, Cindy could finally celebrate her freedom. Peter warned her that she couldn't go bounding around the city, showing off her spider powers. But Cindy instead spun a makeshift suit with her organic webbing and knighted herself Silk. Peter followed her as she web swung across the city, trying to talk sense into her. Cindy swung towards where her parents used to live, but realized that they had moved on, hearing which Peter even promised Cindy to help her find her parents. Cindy eventually asked Peter about the time he killed Morlun. Peter replied saying that he indeed did kill Morlun twice as he came back to life the first time. Cindy smacked Peter across the face, insisting that Morlun could come back to life and hunt her down. In this moment, the two realized that their spider senses were thrumming out of control. It was revealed that Cindy and Peter have a primal attraction to one another due to the fact that they were bitten by the same spider. This was to such an extent that they found it difficult to be in the same room together. While Peter was interviewed at the television station, he was attacked by Black Cat and Electra 
Electro. It was none other than Cindy Moon, who now went by Silk, who swung in to save the day. As for Peter and Cindy, apart from their raging spider pheromones, they made a good team and tackled both the troublesome villains. Cindy later decided to join the Fact Channel, which is a major news channel in New York City, in an attempt to locate her parents. Interesting facts about Cindy Moon. Silk. Let's talk a few interesting facts about Silk that not all fans may know. Did you know that Cindy Moon is one of the very few Korean-American superheroes to exist in the Marvel Universe? Cindy's making into Silk is quite an interesting story. Being stuck in the bunker during her formative teenage years has definitely impacted her personality and general outlook. Her character is said to have major anger issues which are observed by her psychiatrist. To be fair, Cindy has all the reasons to be furious with the world. She was locked away for a decade. She was clueless about her parents' whereabouts and her brother joined the Goblin Gang, losing his memories in the process. When she was told that she needed to work through her deeper issues, since anger is just a symptom, she lashed out at the thought. She also experiences paranoia and crippling anxiety at the mention of Morlun's name. This serves as a reminder that superheroes underneath their masks and power experience human emotions. Like a true friend, Peter asked the help of the Fantastic Four to help Cindy out. This also led to Cindy and Human Torch dating for a little while. After beginning her journey as a superhero, she began working several jobs in the field. One of these was working as an undercover agent for S.H.I.E.L.D. Silk teamed up with Mockingbird to tear down Black Cat's nefarious operation and also poses as a villain which is all part of her work at the organization. In one of these elevator missions, Cindy and Black Cat get stuck in the elevator shaft together. The two ended up bonding over their lives as masked vigilantes. Just as we thought both of them might possibly be friends, Black Cat found out that Silk was posing as an undercover agent for S.H.I.E.L.D. Initially, Cindy struggled to assimilate back into the world after being released from the bunker. To regain a sense of normalcy, she began interning for J. Jonah Jameson, who was also Spider-Man's boss at one point. Jameson nicknamed Cindy as Analog when he noticed her taking notes the old-fashioned way with a pen and paper. Her boss had a soft spot for Cindy. He even and helped her find her brother, Albert Moon. Cindy eventually does find her parents in the negative zone. When she was locked away in the bunker, her parents decided they couldn't just sit around doing nothing while their daughter bore all the consequences. They traveled to the negative zone in search of an antidote for her spider bite. Unfortunately, her father was then made a prisoner of the Ash King, but after a long and arduous search through the negative zone, Cindy finally found her parents. Cindy eventually began feeling the pressure to maintain multiple identities, working at a news station by day and saving the city by night. She finally revealed her identity to her friends to lift some weight off her shoulders. Peter showed up as a good friend and helped her juggle through all of her identities. Marvelous Story Arc of Silk Cindy Moon was part of an impending event in the Spider-Verse. Morlun, who is part of the estranged group known as the Inheritors, detected Cindy's release from the bunker. The Inheritors are said to be created from the lowest ranked totem. They can only function as parasitic feeders of others' powers and dedicated themselves to hunt down all spider totems. Morlun referred to Silk as Spider-Bride and also as the spinner at the center of the web and thus began his hunt. Silk teamed up with the likes of Spider-Woman, Spider-Girl, Miguel O'Hara and the other Spider-People to fight off a group of Inheritors. The assault of the Inheritors was too overwhelming for the Spider-Group and they were forced to retreat. An Inheritor twin duo named Brix and Bora hunted them down again. Silk went along with Spider-Woman to accompany Spider-Noir back to his home dimension of Earth 90214. Silk was forced to flee from dimension to dimension in order to evade the Inheritors attacks and ended up on the radioactive reality of Earth 3145. The Inheritor twins couldn't handle the poisonous air, while Silk survived thanks to her improvised hazmat suit that she fashioned with her webbing. She ended up saving Spider-Woman from their sacrificial ritual. The Spider Group finally had enough of being haunted by the barbaric group of Inheritors. They defeated them in their final encounter and sent them back to the toxic Earth 3145 to suffocate in the irradiated wastelands. After thrashing the Inheritors, Silk branched off to start her solo career as a spider person. She went back to her old bunker and used it for her headquarters. Here she restarted her search for her family but was led on loose ends only finding old records. She teamed up with Spider-Man to fight off Black Cat and a Hydra robot named Dragon Claw. Spider-Man noticed that Silk wasn't doing so well and he reached out to the Fantastic Four for help. The checkup they did in her revealed her entire history. 
Silk was physically healthy, but the test showed that she had debilitating anxiety. Silk began to see a therapist. In another encounter with Dragonclaw, it was revealed that his daughter was being held hostage by Black Cat. This drove him towards all his criminal deeds. While she flourished in her path as a superhero and also focused on her own mental health, Silk still struggled to track down her family. At her workplace at the Fact Channel, Silk's boss, Jonah Jameson, noticed her computer screen. He realised that Cindy was preoccupied with finding her family and he offered to help. While the cataclysmic secret wars raged on, Jameson handed Silk a file on a young boy who looked like her brother. Cindy tracked down her brother, Albert. Determined to fight for her family, Cindy fought off the Goblin Nation and faced off the most peculiar villains from Earth-65. Some of these were her own evil counterpart and a disgusting pet octopus of Doc Ock. Her cover was blown as a double agent when she finally faced off an enraged Black Cat. While Black Cat's gang was taken down by shield troops, Silk was saved by a mysterious superhero named Spectro who turned out to be her ex-boyfriend. Hector revealed that he was sadly killed when his neighbour recklessly summoned a Hector revealed that he was sadly killed when his neighbour recklessly summoned a demon in his apartment. Hector was forced to wander a strange realm and he only had a tangible body during combat. Cindy's friends at the Fact Channel, Rafferty and Lola, told her that they knew of her identity as Silk. The trio headed to an abandoned laboratory, which was still being paid for by a secret patron. The lab held a dimensional portal to the negative zone. Silk, Rafferty and Lola encountered a friendly talking dragon named David Wilcox. Wilcox told them about the ongoing conflict between the noble Red Knight and the Ash King. The dragon revealed the identity of the Red King, who happened to be Cindy's mother, Nari. We already spoke about why Cindy's parents... We already spoke about how and why Cindy's parents travelled into the negative zone to find an antidote for her spider bite. And now Cindy was finally reunited with her parents, Nari and Albert's senior moon. Back home though, Cindy still felt distant and disconnected with her family and immersed herself in work once again. Her boss, Jonah Jameson, wanted her to investigate an organisation named New You Technologies. This company was secretly being run by Jackal and dealt with cloning organs. Silk noticed there was something off about Jameson's behaviour, so she decided to snoop around his office with the help of Spectro. To avoid suspicion, she fashioned a new costume, which prompted Spectro to refer to her as Silkworm. They stumbled upon Jameson talking to his resurrected wife and a revived Matty Franklin. Looking around the new U facility, they found Hector's body and helped him gain his mortal shell back. But after an intruder alarm started going off, all the clones began to glitch, including Hector, who turned back into Spectro. It was none other than Doc Ock and Jackal, who were threatening to spread a virus that would affect everyone in the facility. Sadly, all the clones disintegrated into dust. After this whole debacle, Silk decided to quit her job at the Fact Channel. She joined the Shield Academy and took down Fang, who had expertly swindled Cindy's father and Ezekiel. After a tumultuous journey on the paths of being a superhero and emotional growth, she was advised to focus on her personal life more by her therapist. Yet she began working for Jameson as a journalist and continued her superhero gig. Witnessing her friends and family's joy gave her a sense of renewed hope. Silk and her extraordinary powers and abilities. Silk's power and abilities are similar to those of Spider-Man. She can wall crawl like him and has her own spidey sense known as Silk Sense. In fact, when Spider-Man first met Cindy, he admits that she is considerably faster than he is. Even her Silk Sense is more sensitive than Peter's. Silk describes her Silk Sense as psychic strands of webbing that reach out into the world. Peter describes her Spider Sense as fast as a bullet. Along with her hyper speed, and spider sense, she's blessed with superhuman strength, stamina, durability and agility. She even has superhuman equilibrium and reflexes. Another cool power she has is her organic webbing. Unlike Peter, who makes his own artificial fluid for webbing, Cindy produces organic webbing from her fingertips. She can even make the ends of her webs barbed akin to a fish hook to get a better hold of her enemies. She possesses the skill to spin different kinds of webs, such as the insulated web she spun and was that was insulated from Electro's attacks. She built an air cushioned web that was strong enough to catch a chopper. She can even fashion her webbing into razor sharp claw like protrusions from her fingertips. Another fun fact about the primal connection between Silk and Peter is that she can sense him from wherever he might be in the multiverse. 
The multiverse of Silk unveiling her alternate versions. Let's talk about some of Silk's alternate versions across the multiverse. In the parallel reality of Earth 65, Silk was almost bitten by an irradiated spider, but her teacher swatted it away. The Silk of this reality isn't a superhero fighting for justice, but a super villain. She opened up an evil spy organization named Silk instead. She abandoned her parents and even stole Spider Gwen's interdimensional teleportation device. Daredevil is the kingpin in this reality and the two date for a while. Cindy from Earth 616 was desperate enough in search of her parents that she visited Earth 65 and learned about her despicable counterpart. On Earth 16220, Cindy was a high school student who was considered dead until she got into Stark Camp. On Earth 61610, Cindy was killed and reborn on Doctor Doom's battlefield. She fought in the battle between this reality and Earth 616. She learned the truth from Miles Morales and confronted Doom only to be wiped out by her reality. On Earth 19925, both Peter and Cindy were bitten by an active radio spider, which was an anthropomorphic radio. Mind-blowing appearance of Silk in other forms of media. Cindy Moon will have her own live-action series created by Sony Pictures. And did you know she already appeared in a few movies from the Marvel Cinematic Universe? She made a cameo first in Spider-Man Homecoming as Peter's classmate. She then appeared in the Avengers Infinity War, and we see her in a post credit scene in Spider-Man No Way Home. Cindy was meant to appear in Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, but the creators chose Penny Parker. She will also make an appearance in the spin-off film Spider-Woman. Apart from films, Silk is a playable character in several video games. A few of these include Marvel Avengers Alliance, Marvel Future Flight, Marvel War of Heroes, and also Marvel Puzzle Quest, Spider-Man Unlimited, and even Lego Marvel Super Heroes 2. Marvelous verdict. Here we come to the end of Silk's origin story. Given everything she's been through as a teenager and an adult, her character is complex and she has a lot of depth. We even observed her personal emotional growth as she dealt with her anxiety and rage against the world. While her intimate connection with Peter tied her intricately into the Spider-Verse, she was an iron-willed maverick who struck out on her own. We can only hope she finds a lasting moment of peace and stability after such unpredictable turmoil. And if you like our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't done so already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.